Welcome to the Trumpet Study Project video series. It's the Clodomir edition. In this video, I'm going to play Clodomir's fifth study from his 70 Little Studies book. Afterward, I'm going to talk about a practice strategy that empowers you to be able to create the practice sessions that you need in order to grow your skills on your instrument. You'll want to be doing this if you're not already, because if you're not practicing like this, or you just aren't even sure how to practice, you could be frustrating yourself unnecessarily, taking longer in the practice room than you need to to get better, or not really getting better at all. This strategy is transferable and it's adaptable. To demonstrate it in action, I'm going to share the four main ways I used it to work on study number five that helped me get more out of my limited time in the practice room and successfully build number five up to speed. I've also got a bonus tip for you that's useful to know, and I'll share that at the end. After watching this video, you'll have the knowledge and the power to effectively tailor your practice sessions so you can learn what you need to learn, so you can play what you want to play, whether it's Clodomir or any other music. And well, in regards to Clodomir, these studies are quickly getting harder and we need to do more than just play these studies in order to play these studies. So it's time to get strategic. But first, if you're new here, I wanna say hello, I'm Deanna and here on YouTube, in this video series, I'm sharing my journey to build my own trumpet skills back up after an extended break from regular playing. This practice strategy that I'm sharing in this video is the same one that helped me when I was younger. And I'm using it again because, well, when I was younger, among other things, it helped me complete my undergraduate in music and go to national music competitions in Canada on two occasions. All right, coming up is my current best version of Clodomir's study number five, followed by a powerful strategy and four examples for how to use it. And at the end, we're gonna take that first example I show you and we're gonna have a fun thing to do with it. But first, here's number five. study, number five, following close on the heels of number four, is starting to move us into more challenging territory with tongued interval jumps that are moving around. Then when we flip, flip the page, we're going to see that this is going to continue with more and bigger intervals, big jumps that are even more demanding. As I started to work on number five, I started to incorporate this practice strategy because well, I needed to. <laughs> I, was, I was struggling. And my goal with this video series is to let you know what I'm really doing in order to work up my skills so that maybe you'll find something that you can use as well. So that's why this video. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to start with a look at the skills necessary to play this study and, of course, the ones that follow. So first of all, we've got tonguing and tone. Now, what I mean by that is we have to tongue at the tempo that's indicated. The target tempo is 126, and we have to play those intervals tongued at 126. At least that's our goal. The other thing we want to do while we're doing all of that is keep our sound. We want to sound good for every note we play while we're doing this, while we're playing those intervals. Second, we have to be able to do all of that consistently through the whole context of the study as it's written from start to finish. Again, that's the goal. So range is another thing because this study goes up to an F. It jumps up to it. And while this video isn't specifically about extending one's range, example number four is an idea that I think could help. It helped me. To develop all of these skills, well, we need to do supplemental work. But then you may wonder, well, do we need to buy another study book? Thankfully, no. This is the strategy we want to use. I'll dive into what the examples are for you and see if you can see what I'm doing. See if you can tell really what this strategy is. And just before we get into it, I realized while I was preparing this video, I could create an, a PDF of these examples. So after I finish, I'm going to do that. And when it's ready, I'll put a link in the description. 
Okay, so example number one of this practice strategy. Study number five is similar to study number four in tempo and style, but it begins moving around with many more larger intervals than four had. I found that the target tempo of 126 was fast for these intervals, for playing them at all and really with a nice tone. So I decided I needed to work on getting my tonguing speed up. So I'm going to show you what I did. And then as I mentioned in the intro, after I've shown you all of the examples, we're going to revisit this one for a fun thing you can do with it. So to bring up my tonguing speed, this is what I did. <laughs> Going slow gives myself time, gives time for the tongue to set up and be there and then out of the way really quick. And this is a great approach because while your tonguing is improving, so are your scales, just naturally. You can't beat win-win. And ultimately, working on my tonguing speed and the tone, maintaining it, is something I kept coming back to until I felt comfortable. I carried on with the other examples I'll show you, but I did keep returning. And I used my metronome so I could really see my progress. After I started working on my tonguing speed, I went back to the piece and I started to dig in because the next I needed to work up was my ability to cleanly tongue the intervals. The first challenge I encountered was in the first two bars. So this is what I did. As I went further into the piece, I started to have trouble with the, what I was encountering, and so I did this. It's another way I practice things is I'll loop them, and uh, a lot of them will lend themselves to it. So I'm looping those two bars just to, just to keep running it and getting my body, giving my body the, the opportunity to just keep doing it, just keep doing it, and, and trying to get it light and easy and, and more relaxed. Just, just there, just there, boop, up, boop, up. Finally, example number four, near the end it goes up to the F. I didn't like how I was articulating it, I wasn't landing on it cleanly. So I'm working my way up to the F, so A, C, D, C, A, and then A, C, E, C, A, A, C, F, C, A. So working up the D and then the E and then the F to work up to that F. And this is a way to get up to those higher notes. Could even do. So 
So I'm literally filling in all the way up, making the scale. So C up to F with, with the F scale. But that way we're not doing the jump just yet. But then, you know, bring it in. Until you hopefully get it and if not if you don't fully get it today tomorrow you'll get it or the next day and you'll have it but just play around being creative how you approach the F the easiest way to approach an F in my view is from an E and then from that the D before that so get used to the F by approaching it from the easiest notes and then work your way up to it with more of a jump play around with it have fun and don't worry about the notes if you miss a note, I missed a note. That's my body not quite sure where the F was. A couple of times with it, I found it. And uh, now you may not be as quick, or you might be quicker, I don't know. But don't worry if you're not as quick getting that note right away. I've worked on this an awful lot, and I'm, I'm just coming back to it to dust everything off. So if you're still just working on it for starters, don't worry about it. Just keep giving your body opportunities to figure it out. That's that's all there is to it. It's the air, the tongue, the finding, know where the note is, work your way up to it. You'll get it. You'll get it, no doubt. Do you see what I'm doing? This practice strategy is that when you run into something you can't play well or at all, you pull out the parts giving you trouble and you make your own exercises out of them. And you woodshed them. Woodshedding is a term commonly used to describe the act of practicing some endeavor, usually in private, to improve one's proficiency in performing it. It is typically used by musicians to mean rehearsing a difficult passage repeatedly until it can be performed flawlessly. You work them for a little bit and then you put them back into the context of the piece that you're playing and you move on to the next thing to work on. So in the case of this study, I played single and repeated notes to get my speed up. I tackled arpeggios at various speeds. And I looped sections because just playing the bars once through when I would play the study just wasn't enough. And I worked my way up to the high F to find the centers of those higher notes so that when I could approach it, I played it cleanly. All right, and earlier I mentioned a fun thing you can do when you're playing repeated notes. Well, you can take that idea back into the study itself. <laughs> Okay, so I said I had a bonus tip for you, and that is that in your practice sessions, especially if you're short on time, I want you to know that you don't have to play the whole study each time that you sit down to practice it in order for you to get better at playing it. What you can do instead is you can focus on one part and develop your skill in that area. For instance, say, work on the first four bars, and then when you come back later or the next day, you could start on those four bars and do a quick review and then move on to the next four. Or switch it up and just simply start on the next four bars. Don't start at the beginning. You could do a quick review at the end. Then you just keep building in this way and slowly over time, your skills will grow. Feel free to switch up whatever parts you work on. There are no rules on where you go in this process. You don't have to, nor do you want to, stay within the confines of the notes as they're written on the page in order to improve it. You do need to come back to it, but what you do with it in the practice room is completely up to you. If you want to see this approach in action with another piece of music that I was practicing, check out the video at the bottom here. And when it's ready, study number six is gonna be right at the top. If you got some value out of this video, can you please give it a thumbs up? And if you wanna join me for the rest of the journey through Clodomir's 70 Little Studies, then please consider subscribing. So that's it. I hope you have a fantastic day. Keep on playing. See you next time.